This is our part 2 on series on our national pension scheme. In this episode, I am going to talk about the specifics of national pension scheme. Who are all the people who are eligible to invest in this particular scheme? How you can open your account? What are the different types of accounts which are available here? How much can you contribute? What are your tax benefits? And which are the investment choices that are in front of you when you join the NPS scheme? This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan but investment consultant and a financial planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Now let us look at one by one different provisions of this national pension scheme. First of all, who can invest in this NPS scheme? Anyone an Indian citizen who is between the age group of 18 to 65 can apply for National Pension Scheme account. You have to comply with KYC requirement which means you have to give your identity proof document and you have to give your address proof document. When you subscribe for NPS account, you stand to gain by way of tax benefits under Income Tax Act 1961 as well. In addition to different other provisions of tax exemptions, you can avail an extra 50,000 rupees as the tax benefit for that particular year under section 80 CCD. Now let us look at how to apply for national pension scheme. To apply for national pension scheme, you have to go to points of presence otherwise known as POPs. These are available through length and breadth of the country. Almost all nationalized banks and every private sector bank, many of the NBFCs and post offices are designated as points of presence. You need to go to point of presence, collect a registration form from this POP, fill all the details and provide the necessary forms. The necessary documents to attach with these forms are your identity proof and your address proof, your photo and other details which are mentioned in the registration form. Fill the forms and give it to this point of presence. As a NRI, can you apply for National Pension Scheme? The answer is yes. You can apply for National Pension Scheme. All that you have to do is, you should have a bank account in India. Apart from this, there are certain guidelines for you. From time to time, RBI notifies rules applicable to NRIs. Likewise, you have to adhere to FEMA laws as well. So as long as you adhere to these conditions, you are eligible to apply for National Pension Scheme. Now once you submit filled in registration form to the point of presence, what happens next? Immediately after that, a number called Permanent Retirement Account Number gets generated. The Central Record Keeping Agency otherwise known as CRA will send this PRAN card to your residential address. When it sends this card, along with this, it will send you two more documents. One of the documents that it sends is a telephone identification PIN. This telephone identification PIN is required for you to talk to the call center of NPS. The other document it sends along with the PRAN card is an internet password. Using this internet password, you can access your NPS account 24-7 from any part of the world. Now to open an NPS account through POPs, you have to visit these POPs, you have to fill the forms. It involves paperwork. What if you want to open NPS account completely online? Is it possible? The answer is yes. To open NPS account online, you have to visit the website of NPS Trust. So visit the website of NPS Trust, use the eNPS platform on the website and follow the online instruction. You can do your KYC using the PAN verification or your bank account verification or through Aadhaar verification method. By this method, you don't have to walk into any POPs. You can make this process completely online. When you open an NPS account, you have two types of account there. These accounts are known as Tier 1 account and Tier 2 account. The primary account in these two is the tier 1 account. It's a compulsory account. Unless you have tier 1 account, you will not be allowed to open tier 2 account. 
Likewise, during the course of your investment, for any reason, if tier 1 account gets closed, obviously along with that the tier 2 account will also get closed. Now what is this tier 1 account? The tier 1 account is the compulsory account. It is a non-withdrawable account which means whatever the money you put into this tier 1 account can come out of this only at maturity till such time you can't touch this money. Whereas the tier 2 account is a voluntary contribution that means you can put any amount of money into tier 2 account and you can withdraw any time you like. Now the contribution that you make into tier 1 account will get you the tax benefits but the contribution that you make into tier 2 account will not enjoy any tax benefits. Now in case of NRIs, NRIs will be allowed to open only tier 1 account. They cannot open tier 2 account. This is a specific guideline with respect to NRIs. Now let us look at how you can contribute to this NPS scheme. How much money can you pay into the scheme when you open the account, how much you have to remit. Now payment can be made through POPs or you can pay online as well. Now when you open an account, in case of tier 1 account, you have to put in minimum 500 rupees to start with. For tier 1 account, every year you have to contribute minimum 1000 rupees and at least you should transact at least once in a year. If somebody opens a PRAN account and he does not contribute to this account, at least once a year your account will get frozen. Now a frozen account can also be reactivated by putting some more money into it at some point of time later on. But during this interval for any reason if the value of your account becomes zero it will be permanently closed. In case of tier 2 account you can open an account with a minimum contribution of 1000 rupees when you open the account. There afterwards, you can remit money into this account with a minimum of 250 rupees any number of times in the future. For both tier 1 and for tier 2 account, there is no maximum limit. It is left to your discretion. You can put any amount of money as per your discretion and affordability. Now that you have opened an NPS account and you have funded this account, what happens to the money that you have remitted into this account? Where will it get invested? Will the NPS architecture decide where it will be invested or you should make a decision? Now where it needs to be invested is a decision that you have to make. It is a choice that is left to you. For your assistance, there are two strategies which are available for you there. One is called the automatic investment route. The other is active choice that is you choose where you want to invest. So these are the two options that are given there. My suggestion is you choose automatic investment route. Now if you choose automatic investment route to park your money under the automatic route you have three subheadings. These are called life cycle funds. The first one is known as LC75 are aggressive life cycle fund. The second is known as moderate life cycle fund or LC50. The third one is known as conservative life cycle fund or LC25. Now in case of an aggressive life cycle fund, your investments will be 75% in equity market up to your age 35 and thereafterwards gradually equity exposure gets reduced. In case of a moderately aggressive life cycle fund, 50% of your investment will be in equity market up to age 35. Thereafter, the equity exposure is slowly reduced. In case of conservative life cycle fund, a maximum of 25% will be there in equity market up to your age 35 and thereafter, gradually equity exposure will be reduced. Now, if you have chosen automatic route, and you have not ticked any one of the three options that is given there, by default, the system will pick it up as moderately aggressive life cycle fund. Now, if you are a well-versed customer, you know how markets behave and everything, and you don't want to use the automatic route, then you can use 
the active investment choice. Under the active investment choice, there are four options which are available for you. This is called asset class E, otherwise known as equity instruments. Asset class C, this is fixed income other than the government securities. Asset class G, which is the government securities in the fixed income space. And asset class A, which is the alternative investment strategies like REITs and other things. Now, if you decide to use this active choice of funds, you have to follow certain rules and regulations. Number one, your equity exposure cannot be more than 50%. However, you can decide to put 100% of your investment in the fixed income space. That is asset class C and asset class G put together can be 100%. But your maximum exposure to equity segment cannot be more than 50%. Likewise, asset class A, the alternative investments, cannot be more than 5% of your portfolio. You have a choice to distribute between these four asset classes as long as they will not violate the upper limits given against each asset class. With this, I conclude part 2 of the series on National Pension Scheme. In the next episode, I will discuss how to exit from NPS. When will your account mature? How to take out your money? What happens there afterwards? When you can convert to pension? What is the method that you have to follow? And how much of money you can withdraw? How much of money you have to convert into pension? All these questions I will answer in the next episode. Dear viewers, if you think that subject that I discussed today added some value to you, give me a thumbs up. If you are watching this program for the first time, or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode. On NRI Money Clinic, I will be back with the part 3 of NPS very very soon. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.